What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Hello, hello, hello. This is your boy, Bunny3000. We are back. Geek Swag is here. Heat Magazine's Geek Swag with my boy, Dirty Helmato, as usual. Say hello Hi, to the people. people. How is everybody doing tonight on a wonderful Tuesday evening? Hedimus Maximus. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. What's been going on, yo? Chilling, man. Listen, I've been, I've been, I've been haterating this week a little bit on Microsoft, man. Really? Oh, what you you uh, jumped into the whole Windows Ten? What you do, Hickey stuff? Um, I actually, I, I had a, I had a preview Windows Ten running. Um, so now, um, tonight, you know, I was trying to jump on the bandwagon real quick and upgrade my home, uh, PC to. Windows 10 and uh -huh. um, it's 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 painful. I'm supposed to, you know, you're supposed to get a really? little icon oh, wow. in there, right? So you jump to their site and then there's a script you're supposed to install. Now I'm a technical guy, and the really? script, the, the, the script don't work. It doesn't. It, uh, uh, you know what? Why did I expect it to work? Right? Yeah. yeah. So I had to go on a couple of sites. Some dudes they showed me a hack. Apparently there were some switches and and some uh, values that you had to change within the script and that actually sort of fixed it so we'll see um but uh yeah tomorrow windows 10 so if you already got your uh your 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 little thing to preload it's it's gonna download tonight nice and run the install tomorrow so yeah you know what i decided because the laptop that i have is my gaming laptop that i'm not gonna upgrade because I have no idea how all that compatibility and all that other kind of stuff is going to end up, you know, messing with stuff or not messing with stuff, you know. So I was like, if I do anything, I'll probably do it on my other other laptop that I have, you know, that I just do different things on. Things on, yeah. Yeah, so it'll be a bit safer, you know what I mean? Well, here, here's the thing. I think... If you if you have anything that's Windows 8.1 compatible that's fairly new, yeah, it's gonna run on Windows 10. It, you, I don't think you're. Oh, I'm sure it. it'll run it. I'm just worried about you know how it is. They they drop it and then this start. You know, the, all of a sudden this program works. This program works, but oh, this program doesn't or has some kind of weird bug that drives you crazy. You know what I mean? Or like yeah. a microphone doesn't work as well, like the volume gets jacked up because it's not supported yet and all other kind of junk. So I was like, you know what, I'm not even going to bother with that on this one because, you know, this is the one I do the show on. So if I get Actually, stuck and do a show on right. this and it jacks something up. Mm -mm. Well, I've been running it for, <laughs> I've been running the previews and the betas for um, probably about a month and a half now. So uh -huh. last week what they did, they... um. They ran it. They they shot an update down out to me that actually made my copy legal. So if you've been right. running the beta and anything like that, you know, and being on the test bed, they will. You'll be the first in line to get the the full authorization key. Mm -hmm. Okay. But there's some tips out there for anybody that's in there listening. If you plan on doing this, I'd strongly recommend you get all your Windows updated. So any patches, anything out there, make sure you get those downloaded first. Uh, so there's no compatibility issues with uh, the operating system. Um, any drivers for like, you know, if you're gonna put it on your gaming PC, make sure you get the latest, you know, NVIDIA drivers if that's what you're rocking with the RAID and the AMD, whatever you got. Just make sure you get the latest drivers for those those things. So when you run the update, you shouldn't have a problem. And of course, I would do a little system state backup, yep. <laughs> <laughs> just in case, preferably off to a portable hard drive. You know, and any critical files you have, dump them on there just just in case things go wrong. And remember, you have, you know, if you've been, you already got the button, you've updated, you got about a year of uh, Windows 8, I mean, Windows 10 mm -hmm. to go with. So, yeah, you know, that's you, right. You'll be pretty good. You'll be pretty good for a while. So, you can test it out. 
I, the the feature I'm looking forward to the most is um, hey man, Cortana. <laughs> our Cortana was off the hook. I actually heard it was really it worked really well. Yeah. Um, I haven't tried it out on my because the machine I got it the microphone stinks on it. And right. I'm not going to put on a headset and a microphone just to talk to Cortana. So. Right. Exactly. You know. So. But you know you want to. I do. I really do. So. <laughs> well, um, <that's> girl. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah. No. You got. You can actually change this feature. It's called Hey Cortana. You can enable it. And so you can. Hey Cortana. <laughs> <laughs> hey Cortana. <laughs> What you mean when I'm wearing? <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> I'm tell your girl, uh, <laughs> I'm installing myself on our iPhone right now. <laughs> swag just got weird. <laughs> I'm uncomfortable. So, so that you got, you know, you got Cortana, and um, of course you got the Xbox One streaming feature, which I want to try out too. So, right, you know, yeah. basically you go into your system settings on your Xbox, you enable. Uh, Streaming with uh, with your uh, Windows 10 machine, and you should be able to do that. So, yep. yeah, we'll see. I we'll don't see. know how much I'd use that feature though, personally. Um, probably not. You know where it would probably come in handy though, Beach? Like, say, you know, say we're doing a show, right, and we got uh, a session going. Yep. And um, you know, you 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 want we want to play a little game while we got thing going, right? And you're not close to your Xbox, or you got too many things tied up. That'd be a nice time to use it. True. You know what I'm saying? So you just enable it. You plug, uh, you plug one of your uh, uh, Xbox One controllers in, and you just go. Mm. You know? hmm. So I think that yeah, you know, it's a, be a good it's time. There, to use. and I and I'm sure that as it goes along, they'll start adding and changing and patching and doing more stuff to it. Cause oh, like, absolutely. You know, that's just a little. That's just a tip of the iceberg, apparently, for all the stuff they're probably they probably have planned for it. Um, you know, just like with the Xbox One, they'll probably start rolling out patches and features like every month. You know, actually, I, I think you're probably going to see weekly updates from. Oh, people. weekly. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, a lot of the stuff that I've done on the preview were weekly updates, so they've been pretty aggressive. I know they've been patching other systems hardcore to get people prepared for Windows 10. So, I mean, they I hate to say it, but they're running, you know, the crack mentality. Basically, I'm going to give it to you for free, get you hooked, then I'm going to whack you. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah so, um... That's why it's like, get in now. <laughs> get in now, right. So, I mean, like I said... I. I do agree with some of the stuff you say. You know, if if you have critical PC, right? <laughs> you know, because you know how Microsoft oh, screws you sometimes. Yeah, it's just like, it's, uh, it's it's an optional update, so you're not forced to get it. But you know, if you have something that's mission critical and you're not sure, don't do it. Wait for them to fix some of the, the problems. I mean, for most part, what I've had worked. Um, just some little quirky things, obviously. But you know, like um, for a time there, you know, like I have my Outlook notifications on. Yeah. And the Outlook notification just coincidentally pop over the bar where you have your volume. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I be like trying to raise and lower the volume, and uh, and I get an email coming and it pops up, mm -hmm. the volume bar I can't adjust it anymore. Right. Yeah. yeah just little weird stuff like that where you're like, oh, that's right. annoying. It doesn't you can't kill do it. it. But it's so just you have to go annoying. all the way in the control panel and manually <laughs> do it, right? If not, you got to reboot the computer for it to come back. Mm -hmm. And that, that that was like stupid. I'm like, yeah. what the hell is this? You know, like you know, just some dumb things. And then you've got you've got the Edge browser, which is for for a network administrator like myself, or sorry, data center administrator. You know, it's yeah. it's a pain in the butt because like I write scripts and policies to push out favorites and stuff to the browser. Mm -hmm. A lot of those things aren't compatible with older systems. Hmm. Right, so like you know, we have we have policies where we push out favorites and stuff, and they don't. But what they right. will do is, they are going to have um, um, uh, a win uh, an edge browser, which is the new one, mm -hmm. and they're going to have IE eleven on there too. So you'll have both. So you know you're not going to be completely screwed because Edge is not going to work with everything right now. I tell you that right now. So you right. may get on a site that uh, uses um, Flash. Which coincidentally they've they're getting rid of, by the way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I heard that everybody's all scared about that too. Well, here's the thing: you know how many applications run Flash? Lots, <laughs> lots, <laughs> lots and lots and lots and lots. Yeah, so that's a big f you to those people. Thanks, by the way. You know, hey, you know what? I know you've based your business application on Flash, but 
we're just not going to make it anymore. <laughs> Peace. Oh? Yeah, exactly. So, they, they, you know, they just some people might be thinking, ah, oh, well, I don't need any more updates. I don't need a newer version. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wait till another browser comes out, pal. Then right. you're a host. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's busted. I don't know. Right. So, you know, Silverlight, all that stuff. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. And, uh, of course, Windows 10 is going to be available on phones, too. Mm-hmm. I think they have, I think they're trying to push an Android and a, um, uh, I iPhone version that you can install. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to get it on everything. Of course. So. <laughs> yes, yes. Basically, yes. Microsoft is turning into Cyberdyne systems. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Next thing you know, Skynet. Yeah, pretty much our phone's going to turn into Transformers and kill us. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be something all funky. It's... Run, buddy, run! <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> phone got me oh, man. Lock. This craziness. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, Windows 10 is dropping. When, when is that? Tomorrow? I mean, tomorrow? Is it when no, it's, it's live or whatever? Or is it live now or something? Like that? Um, I, I believe if you have, if you got the invite, for the for the upgrading you've accepted, yeah. you're starting. They said you're starting to download as early as now, um, you know, yeah. to get it ready. So when your PC does its update, automatic update, it'll reboot and install it. Um, gotcha. But uh, tonight at 12 Eastern, I believe, it will be available. So it'll be a part of the Windows update. Completely. Goodness. Yes. All up in you. <laughs> That's right. Get some. Oh man. So yes. Uh, before we before we jump into Mech Tom Bomb's agenda that we always have, as usual, I try to give people a little bit of a preview of you know some games that are either coming out, some early access games that I try out, or just to give some gameplay as we do you know as we do the show, um, you know just to give y'all something else to watch other than our pretty mugs as we talk in and stuff yeah, like that. Boy. Nah, I mean, since all my comic book covers like fall down while I'm talking. So, <laughs> <laughs> you can't see that one because all the glare. That got it. Okay, there we go. Um, so, today, or tonight rather, um, one of the early access uh, games that I was, that I've been given, um, that I think Iceberg Interactive, I can't remember if they're the publisher or the developer, uh, this game here, Into the Stars. Um, and in general, this the way this game was kind of described to me in the description was um, if you've ever played FTL or Faster Than Light, which was like one of those indie games that just won all kinds of awards when it came out, uh, then you know the kind of genre, I guess you could say, that this game is. It's like a mix between Battlestar Galactica, Star Trek, and, you know, anything that just has... A commander and a whole bunch of other, you know, officers that help him run the ship, right? So um, the whole concept of the game, and you can kind of see me flipping around and doing all kinds of stuff. The concept of the game is it, almost exactly like FTL. You have this ship that has all this technology on it, um, and you have resources that you have to stockpile on your ship, and you basically are on a race across a galactic map away from a big very um highly or a very high tech uh alien force that's chasing you want to bring down the syndicate oh cow it's impossible something is all up in my uh ear sockets that doesn't sound impossible and what would that be oh it's uh it's ig and i had another I had another thing that was up trying to show me something because I, you know, I was gonna bring this up, this other site up, so we could talk about that in the agenda. But I forget. IGN always has like videos and stuff that pop up every time you pull up, you know, pull up their website at the time. Um, but yes, in Into the Stars, uh, you you basically play like a Star Trek style kind of game where you have all these officers that have all these uh, role-playing game style um, abilities like management, piloting, commanding, medical, engineering, and toughness. And you give them tasks to handle as your ship is flying about trying to escape what is called the Scorn, which are these other this other alien species that basically has better technology than you and they're chasing you. 
So, um, of course, as you're flying across this map, you're using resources for life support, for food, and for um, other systems that you run on your ship. So you have to go from planet to planet or from, uh, I guess you could say, heavenly body or planetary body to planetary body. And you have to mine resources or and go on these uh, little away missions on the surface and try to find new technology and other kinds of things that will assist you in getting all the way across the galactic map and escaping. So um, as you're doing so, you have like, I think, 10,000 civilians on the ship that you're trying to keep alive as well. So, of course, they're using up resources as well because, of course, you're supporting them and trying to transport them across this galactic map. And as you're going about it, it's all real time. And, uh, you know, so you kind of have to assign different officers to handle different things as you're flying and then once you, you know, as you can see here on the screen, uh, you mine resources by this little quick time event that happens and you store those resources. And it's hard. And I mean, it, it's still early access. I think they're, they're going to be adding more features and stuff to it because um, what I found was uh, Faster Than Light, the thing that made Faster Than Light great was that every time you played it, the map that you played on and the encounters that you had in Faster Than Light were all randomized. So every time you played it, it was a different experience every time you played it. Um, but on here on Into the Stars, um, it seems as if the map that you're on is always the same. Uh, so you're always flying to the same planetary bodies or, you know, you can see the same, I guess, uh, map each time that you do it or at least from my experience i don't know if i was doing it wrong or if i was missing something but again this is early access um they may they may actually be changing it uh so that it'll be a bit more randomized as you're doing it um i found navigation in this thing was really difficult i kept getting lost as i landed on a planet as I, you know, came back on the ship and tried to start flying again, I would lose my bearings sometimes, and I'd have to spin around in circles in order to find, you know, which way I was supposed to be going. And time is key, because Scorn, they're powerful, and if you have to fight them, then you're almost out of luck, you know, until you really find some better um, technology for your ship. So it's an interesting game. I think they still have some work to do on it before it's something that'll blow people away. But it looks gorgeous. You know, it's a beautiful game. Um, you know, it, as an indie game, it's not one of those where you pick it up and it's like, oh, pixel art. You know, kind of like Faster Than Light. <laughs> uh, this this game does have some really good, um, really good art. The you know, Galact as you can see, the stars and the 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 command deck and everything. They look really nice. Um, nice little transitions from each screen to each thing. So it, it, it's interesting. I think there's some elements they could add to it that'll flesh it out a bit more, make it a bit more robust. But we'll see what they come up with. We'll see what, what ends up coming of it. Definitely keep your eyes on it because I certainly will as I continue with the gameplay and try to see if I can actually survive in this game. It is hard as dirt. Or there's not hard. Hard as rock. Hard is it's just daggone hard. <laughs> Every time I've played, I've died before I got even a you know a third of the way across the map or a quarter of the way across the map. It's just hard. Okay, so um, on our agenda, what we really wanted to go over today, um, and I might save this for um, now. That I think about it, save this for like the second uh, hour at like maybe 10 o'clock I kind of wanted to jump over to something I thought that was kind of interesting that Marvel's been doing um, you know I think a lot of people know that Marvel is like destroying their universe in comics and they're rebooting everything and I think you missed that show I did I did that show Jay with uh, um, Chris Wiltz of, of uh, designnews.com okay. and we kind of glossed over uh, what Marvel had revealed, um, they basically have new plans for a lot of the different heroes um, that you know that they have uh, have books for. So you know they basically said right now they're running maybe 30, 
30 or so different titles. And they said once they destroy the universe and start the universe over, that they're probably going to upgrade and they're going to end up having anywhere from like 50 to 60 different ti individual titles. So, um, you know, uh, a lot of what you'll see is like, um, so for instance, uh, you know how they've been trying to diversify all their characters? Diversify stuff. their bonds? Yeah, diversify <laughs> their bonds and stuff. Um, how they made, like, Captain America, Sam Wilson. Um, yeah. How they made... Um, oh, so they're basically trying to do everything that they're doing in the comic. Yeah, but some of the, some of the characters, you know, they're allowing to die off in the old universe. And then they're bringing the new ones into the new universe. So, um, like Miss Marvel, they rebooted Miss Marvel and made her a Muslim teen. So they're going to have her continue her storyline into the new universe. Um, they're going to have Spider Man continue, but he's going to be married and he's going to give up the mantle of being spider-man you know an act of spider-man in like the avengers and everything so that miles morales um can okay. take the mantle of spider-man the active mantle of spider-man so the spider-man with peter parker is going to be more of hey this is peter parker married um to what's her name the redhead girl uh, uh mary jane mary jane yes mary to mary, mary jane, jane. With, with a baby and, i always you know, thought so, that was funny they call her Mary Jane. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Mary Jane. <laughs> <da, da>, <laughs> <Mary Jane. laughs> um, so yeah, they're gonna have they're gonna have that uh, for Spider Man. They're gonna have um, Wolverine is not gonna be the official Wolverine anymore. He's gonna be old. Right. I think the I think he like okay because I'm like I don't remember them being another Wolverine in the comic. Well, well, yeah, they, I mean, in the comic book, what they did was they have another Weapon X, and they've had another Weapon X for... Yeah, it was a uh, girl, right? Right. Um, X-23 was her name, right? Right. So, um, Wolverine basically ended up being her mentor because he knew what she went through. She knew what he went through, but um, the difference between the two, in my eyes, was that X-23 didn't have all of the emotional baggage and ties and the empathy that Wolverine has, you know, because Wolverine, as he's grown older, some of the relationships he's had with people like Jean Grey and Professor X, I won't, I don't want to say have made him a softie, but you know, it has brought yeah. a different side to him. Yeah, that has allowed him to suppress the berserker rage and you know animalistic portion of him to a degree. Okay, yeah, you, yeah. you see what I'm saying. Yeah. So, you know, he, he would think twice about killing is basically yeah, the before difference. he was just like before he would just tear whatever it was to shreds. Right. Now, the difference is X-23, as she began, you know, as part of the X-Men and the X-Force and everything, she didn't have any of those inhibitions. So she was ready to kill, period. And um, so Wolverine was kind of trying to mentor her as a part of the X-Force squad. And he was having a hard time doing it because Cyclops was like leading the X-Men for a time. And he was giving Wolverine and the X-Force all these, you know, secret ops missions that are like, you know, undercover or whatever. And he was allowing them to kill people right. and kill their foes. So, you know, Wolverine was had this quandary. You know, he was trying to he was trying to teach X-23, you know, not to just be so quick to kill. And then they keep getting on these missions to assassinate all these villains and all this other kind of stuff. So, um, it was, you know, and that was a long time ago in the comic books, actually. But, you know, that that um, that uh, struggle uh, okay. was actually pretty good in the storyline. And it'll be interesting to see where they kind of place her mindset as she evolves and becomes just plain Wolverine. Um, and I'm not 100% certain how they're making all the different teams, but one of the different, um, one of the other different things, let me see if I can find the picture, that I thought was interesting is, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. oh, here it is, episode 35, we had a picture of it. Um, you don't know who is Iron Man, 
yet. All you know is that there's a suit. Um, the Thing is no longer a part of the Fantastic Four. He's a part of Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, apparently Marvel is going to make a larger attempt to be to have the Inhumans more of a um, featured group than the X-Men. So it just seems like they're going to focus a bit more on the Inhumans than they did in the past. Um, you know, uh, Doctor Strange, for some reason, has an axe, so there's something up with that. Um, I'm not 100% certain if, uh, what's his name, um, Star-Lord, I'm not certain if he's a part of the Guardians of the Galaxy, he's going to have his own comic book. Really? Um, I, yeah, mm -hmm. he's going to have his own comic book. I don't know if that means that he's, you know, not a part of the Guardians or what. So they haven't, re you know, they haven't started it yet. It doesn't really start until um, October. Okay. And um, also, what was the other interesting thing they had? Um, there's a lot of different spider people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Gwen Stacy is alive. And she apparently is a spider person. Um, so one of the comic books is, um, I guess, I, I can't remember if it's just Spider People or Spider World. or You know, it's just a bunch of different versions of Spider-Man that are a group. And I think that kind of spawned off of when they had, uh, had a lot of different people that had Spider-Man's powers. Um, at one point, you know, I, I never went. liked that that they did that. Like, yeah, you know, that like, wasn't you know, really like, good, but they like, they've, they've kind of expanded on it, and a lot of people love like the new Gwen Stacy, um, and you know, of course, Miles Morales, and a few other new Spider characters or whatever that have kind of. I don't. I don't mind the the passing the torch kind of thing, but like, right? You know, I mean, I think that's a part of why they're doing it, and um, you know, apparently Steve Rogers. I guess he's staying retired, but he's back in his Captain America suit. Um, but he's going to have his own comic book, and I guess they're just going to call it Steve Rogers. Um, of course, uh, Sam Wilson's going to continue to be uh, Captain America. Uh, I guess Black Panther is still Black Panther because he's still there. <laughs> yeah, actually, that, that movie should be coming pretty soon, I think. Uh, I think that's next year or the year after, something like that. They kind of bumped it. Um, uh, what's his name from Agents of the Shield? Uh, um, Agent Coulson. Coulson. Yes, Agent Coulson is getting his own comic book. Really? Uh, um, yes. Um, there's a female Thor who is basically... Thorina? Uh, no, not Thorina. Um, what was his love interest in the in the uh, on Earth? What is her name? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about. That's basically who it is. She oh. ends up having cancer or something like that in the book, and in order to save her, I guess, something happens where she takes he up smacked the... smacked upside the head with the hammer. Well, I mean, she just takes the hammer, and something happened to Thor, so she ends up becoming the new Thor. Um, and, of course, Miss Marvel. That's Boston. Vision's, Vision's <laughs> still there. Well, apparently the comic book is doing really well. The story is pretty good from what a lot of people have been telling me. So, um, And then there's, like, a Native American hero that they had a long time ago that they, like, canceled the story for that they're bringing back, um, as well as a bunch of other characters that I don't think they announced. But, um, you know, they're they're doing a bunch of new stuff. And what I thought was even more interesting than that, um, you know how they, how when they do, um, when they do all of this and they start releasing new number ones and they start releasing variant covers for all the different co comic books, right? Uh -huh. So everyone gets in this mad dash to get all the variant covers for, you know, important comic books, right? Because they end up. Uh, being valued for uh, being valued for a lot of money man, most of the time. So an interesting thing that Marvel has done that actually has been getting a lot of criticism. Um, they decided that all of their number ones um, are going to have hip hop crossovers. So okay, 
So what, they're going to have Rizzo on every track, too? No, no, no. <laughs> the artwork. Where in the world oh, okay. did I put my, my flash drive? That on it. I had my flash drive that had all of the artwork on it, but I'll just see if I can find it. So, like, here's an example. Um, and, I'll, and, and I'll see whether or not you can, uh, you can guess which cover this is. Can you see it? Uh, no, all I see is the game in the background. Okay, I'm trying to make it bigger. Ah, uh, ooh. That almost looked like a Wu-Tang cover. Nope. That is The Roots. Um, I can't was remember. Out? Let's see, which album was this one? This was Philadelphia, Philadelphia Half-Life. So I'll put that. Let me see if I can get that cover up so you can see that one. But the, you know, this that's kind of the concept. So their so this cover is basically their Avengers, and here is the original cover right next to it. You know, I think I'm getting a little lag on the video. Probably you'll you'll see it in a bit. You see it now? Not yet. <laughs> okay, there it goes. The there it goes. Yeah, but that's what they're doing. They, you know, they're taking classic hip hop covers, and then they're turning them into comic book covers, and they're putting all the heroes, you know, with with the uh, in the same poses and in the same kind of artwork as um, the hip hop ones. So here's another one. Um, Hey, what's up, Rag Gamer 33 Welcome to the show. We are talking about some of the things that uh, Marvel is doing with their upcoming titles. Here's another cover. I'm sure you can figure this one out. This one's kind of hard, but I think you can figure this one out, Jay, when you see it. It'll be interesting <laughs> to see whether you can figure out which... which uh, which um, album? Oh, I don't too. know, man. You no. don't know this one? Well, uh, it took a little either. while, but the 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 way you get this one is look at, you know, don't worry about the characters and how everyone's sitting and everything because it's very very colorful. It's very very hard if that's all you're looking at. Look at the the font. Look at the words, the font that they're using, and then you can almost guess what group it is. And kind of, and it'll lead you down the path to say, "Oh, okay, that's what it is." I don't know. Hey, what's up? Not law, not law nut. <laughs> 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 Sorry if I if I murdered. Okay, so I will get the. It's basically Outcast. Uh, I think it's Aquimini. Is the album. Let me see if I can find that one. See, a lot of these albums, I had them digitally. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I don't like it. It'll have to be real old school. I don't even want to give my age, but it's gonna have to be old for me to guess. Uh huh. Because like I, some of the stuff that I have is old album art. I mean, just I was digging through some of my stuff uh, earlier. Uh -huh. I don't know if people are into like kung fu flicks, but bam. That's <laughs> Shogun Assassin. <laughs> well, that okay. This one, another one of my favorites. <laughs> Master flying guillotine. That's right, <laughs> chopping heads, son. <laughs> okay, here's a here's a good one. This one has a compilation of albums, and I'll see which ones you can get. And these are older ones that I think you'll be able to get pretty easy. Probably not. That you know. I think you know these. All right. I'll make this bigger and see if you can figure out which ones you can figure out. Okay. Which ones you can. Um, this one, the first one with the Iron Man's on it. That's yep. uh, you uh, better get uh, that one. That's um, the purple album. <laughs> the purple, the purple album. Boo. That's what they called it. No, but that wasn't the name of it. It's um, no, no. Look at the words at the top. Look at the words at the top. Yeah, it's Cuban Links. But yeah, they it the there purple. you go. They called it the purple tape because it was purple. The you purple tape. The whole thing was. Oh, purple. the tape was purple. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. See, I didn't tape. buy it. I didn't buy it as a cassette tape. 
Oh, okay. So when you buy that's it, why, so that yeah, was that's why I didn't catch that one. But uh, yes, that one, that's Raekwon. Right. The second one, the duck is old, dirty bastard. Of course, <laughs> yes, that's an easy <laughs> one, y'all. I know um, you don't know which one the uh, Squirrel Girl is. Which one is that one? That one's not a classic one. I don't know. Not Lognut not- got it though. Lo- not Lognut got it though. Probably Common. Nope. Tyler the Creator. I don't his know his debut Tyler. album that came out. Nope. I didn't know that one. And the other one, of course, is Biggie Ready to Die. <laughs> yes, yes. Got Gotta some trap call with us. Yes, <laughs> trap call yes. Quizzes. Midnight course, Marauders. That's right. Then you got the end to the I mean, Wu-Tang. No, 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 that's not Midnight Marauders. Which no, that's, that no, that's the one before. Um, it might be Midnight Marauders, isn't it? No, you're right. It is Midnight Marauders. Yeah, yeah it's Midnight Marauders. All yeah, right. Yeah. Then, you got, then you got some uh, Wu-Tang. Wu-Tang. Okay. Um, that's a good ooh. cover, though. I don't know. Nah, yeah, you got to figure this one out. I love this one. The Extraordinary X Men. Which one is this one? Oh, hold on. That, that cover looks. I'll, get, I'll give you a. It's hint. not De La this Soul, is, is it? Yes, it is. There you go. Yes. That was, that was which one? Uh, the one they had Potholes in My Lawn, and I can't yeah. remember the name of it. Because they had like long names for their album or whatever. You okay, better get the Doctor Doc Strange one, though. Dude, man, that's the chronic son. Everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Chronic yes. son. And of course, Miseducation of Lauren Hill. Yes, yes, that one was easy. That one was easy. Let's see, they have a few more every month. Um, pretty much, they're going to be releasing a new, you know, a new group that they're doing. Because I mean, dude, they're doing like almost sixty. Wow. So um, let's 60? see if I can. Yeah, wow, they're doing like sixty hot. titles. So I don't know if they're going to do all of them with uh, variant covers. But I know they're going to do a lot of them. Uh, let's see here. That is a lot. There's another collage that has some. Dun, 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 dun. We'll do this one. Because this one has some on it also. But they're cut off. Oh, no. They cut some of them off. Okay, I'll just do this one. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> You should know this one. This one's another classic one. So, dun, 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 into the stars, doing all the stuff in the background. Okay, here it is. Are you, is that, that one, are you eating, oh, that's, um, Eric B. and Rockham? Yes, sir. Yeah. I ain't no joke. <laughs> that's like the mic spoke. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Here's another classic one. Big shots. That's right. Nasty knives in your area. That's right. Dude, I love that album. That had some really good songs on it. Mm-hmm. This one might be kind of hard. See if you get this one. Uh, that one doesn't look familiar. This one's CL Smooth. The one where. Uh, Really? Yeah, this one This one is, see if I can find it, find the real cover for this one. But yeah, this one's CL Smooth, the album that they had, uh, you know. Yeah, that's where they went solo, right? T-Roy, Trouble T- you know, T-Roy, they remember yeah, this over you. Yeah, t- really? I thought yeah. it was a different one. I thought Mm-mm. the cover was different. Mm-mm, I think that's the one. See if I can find the real cover, because a lot of, you know, a lot of people on the Because I, I had that taking... album. I just, I just, I'm thinking of a different cover. I'm thinking of him. It's like him in a jail cell, mm-hmm. and then Pete rocks behind him, and he has an afro with a pick in it, yeah. and they sit with the door open. For some reason, I'm thinking that I don't know. I know I was one of their album covers. I thought it was that. Let's see here. I yeah, I'm trying another... to look it up right here too. Um, because it, it's been awesome. You know, a lot of people have been bugging out over these, so they've been playing around with them making their own some people have been making their own and stuff like that so i'm trying to trying to catch them without catching the ones where other people have been making their own We're like oh nope that one's not real <laughs> oh goodness the hawkeye one da, da, da. I'm surprised All right, let's see. 
Yes, it is. Pete Rock and CL Smooth. I found it. Oh, you found it? Okay. Yeah, okay. just if you Google uh, Pete Rock, CL Smooth, they have all their and do uh, album art, mm. you'll see all of them. And here's, an here's another good one that I like that they did. Um, pull this one off. Then they had 50 Cent. Really? Iron Man. <laughs> I was like, that's actually a pretty good cover, you know, with Iron Man and everything like that. Then they had one for. Dun, 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 dun. Had one for the far side as Guardians of the Galaxy. I like that one. That's nice. It's kind of dope. And let's see. They had. This one has, this one's like a uh, collage. Let me see if I can get this one bigger because it's kind of hard to see. But you'll see some other one, other notable ones in there as well. So if you look all the way at the bottom, the, the one that I really, really didn't get was this purple one down here at the bottom. That Star-Lord. Yeah, I don't know what I that can't one. place that one. I don't know who that one is. Hey, what's up, Constance? Welcome back, welcome back. Um, then, of course, there's the Sam Wilson one. This is a recent one, action, actually. Um, ASAP Ferg, he, uh, his, his recent album, I think that was a few years ago, his debut album that came out, they redid, is Sam Wilson, Long Live Cat. Hey, what's up? Oh, well, thank you, uh, Not Log Nut. I appreciate that. If you could, make sure you follow us. Also, follow us on um, on uh, Twitch TV dot Twitch TV backslash H E E D uh, Geek Swag. So we've got our own uh, Twitch channel as well as here, as well as doing the podcast here on Ladies of the Roundtable. But yes, thank you for joining us. Um, also, the other one, you see that other one, Jay, the Wolverine one? Yeah, I'm trying you to remember which that. one that one is. I'm taking a guess. Uh huh. I know that album, man. <laughs> I either want to say it's Bobby Digital. Nope. Okay, so it's not that one. Nope, not Bobby Digital. I know that one because they were covering in blood, man. I, mm -hmm. uh, and I have it in my head, man. I, when you say it, I'm going to be mad because I know I I'm not even going to say it. All I got to do is... <laughs> it was Red Man. No, DMX, not son. Red. It was DMX? That's yeah, that was, was his DMX. first one. That was his first yeah. one. They all dripping in blood. Sitting there like... They're... Yes. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, him and Red Man be having some real... Ugh. Wild looking covers. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They do, they do. And then, of course, Public Enemy down there in the bottom. Yes, that one was easy to spot. Yeah, Public that Enemy. one's easy. But, yeah, you know, that, that, that's their that's their plan for the whole, you know. And the thing that I guess you could say was a part of the so-called controversy with this new direction that they were taking with these covers um, that I've been seeing a lot um, is that people were like, okay, we appreciate the fact that Marvel is trying to, uh, you know, pay homage to... Uh, they're trying to pay homage to the connection between hip hop and comics because there's always been a long-standing, you know, connection between hip hop artists and comics. Because a lot of hip hop artists have their own comic books and stuff like that nowadays, and have for a long time actually. But um, uh, what what some people have been saying though is that in this whole drive for diversity that Marvel has been pushing, it seems like they've you know, they've been throwing little kernels and throwing, you know, they've been throwing out a lot of pennies when people are looking for dollars. You know what I mean? They're yeah. they're they're doing the, all this all this kind of stuff like, oh, hey, we're doing hip hop covers. We're we're changing Captain America into, um, you know, Sam Wilson, that that kind of thing. Um, and Constance, this is only this is only a uh Thing that um, Marvel is doing. I don't think DC is doing this at all. They've already rebooted their whole universe like 15 times. They might be doing it again for all I know. Um, but the the gripe that a lot of people have is that, well, what we really want in terms of when we say diversity uh, from Marvel is we'd like to see more writers as well as artists 
that are diverse, whether they're Asian, female, black, Hispanic, whatever. You know, they're just looking for, okay, you're doing all these diverse titles with, you know, diverse characters, but can you also put some diverse writers in um, artists on those diverse titles as well? You know, because apparently the... I guess you could say the percentage or how, you know, it's, it's just disproportionate in terms of representation of a lot of different uh, um, ethnicities when it comes to writers and artists within Marvel. And I'm pretty certain it's the same with DC as well. But, um, you know, it, it was just interesting to see that that ended up becoming a big topic when Marvel came up with this idea and started um, and started bringing out you know all these covers and everything so but you know me i'm gonna be all over this when this drops dude i'm gonna i'm gonna get all my favorite ones i'm gonna have i'm gonna rock those jokers i'm gonna put them up on my wall my wife is gonna be all pissed off she's gonna be like no bj that's corny we don't want comic books on the wall i'm like dag on it girl this is me this is what i like <laughs> Well, you can like it in the covers. basement. <laughs> yeah, all these all these variant covers and stuff like that. So it, I, I like it. I, I like some of the covers what they did with them. They're they're pretty tight. They're pretty cool. So I'll definitely be. Uh, I'm I'm drinking the Kool Aid on this one. Bunny is drinking the Kool Aid. <laughs> but um, also, let's see what else were we gonna get into. Um, before we jumped into like the really, really hardcore stuff that we wanted to talk about with gaming, um, I kind of wanted to gloss over any movies or TV stuff that you, you've been getting into as of late. Well, you know, I started getting into, um, you know, I jump on IGN every once in a while and everybody's been raving about, uh, True Detective. Yeah, and, yeah, it's uh, got a great cast. I haven't watched it yet, but it's, it's got a pretty great it's, cast. I, I actually recommend it. So if you got HBO or whatever, you know, you can go there and replay all of them. So this weekend while it was raining, I got, you know, I got sold out a little bit. I, I was supposed to have some company, but they didn't show up. <laughs> so I did a few things and then, you know, started doing my watch. <laughs> <laughs> and I flicked it on. I actually binge watch up to season two. I mean, there, it's it's only uh, eight episodes per season, but it's pretty mm-hmm pretty good so i've been i've been hitting that up you know and uh season one or two what what i think they're gonna do it's like the american horror story kind of deal every yep. season it's different so, well it i from what i heard though it, i mean it's a different storyline but they're still using different cast whereas yeah, like they're using american a different horror story right. they try to use most He's the, the same, same cast, cast maybe add a few more people right this is a yeah. complete different cast um complete different storyline complete I don't know if maybe they're going to have something eventually they're going to tie in together. It doesn't mm-hmm. look like it because the first one was like down south in Louisiana. And then oh, season yeah. two is like in L.A., you know. Mm-hmm. So, so like uh, who was who was uh, the in the first season again? I can't remember. Um, McConaughey. McCona- Matt- that's right. It was McConaughey and, and uh, Woody Harrelson. Woody Harrelson. That's right. Right. Um, and uh, it, so it, it was good. Two has- it was really good. Has uh, uh, Colin Farrell and Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn um, is is Rachel playing, McAdams. Yeah, Rachel McAdams. Vince Vaughn is actually playing an awesome bad guy. He mm. he kind of reminds me of uh, D'Onofrio, uh, Vincent D'Onofrio in um, Daredevil. in uh, Daredevil. Mm-hmm. You know, he's always kind of on that lighter side, and then you see the side of him; it's just dark, man. Right. And it is like he's he can play a, he can play a really good uh, bad guy there. Oh yeah, so, I mean you know he was doing what was that that other movie Psycho? Didn't he do yeah. like a remake of Psycho where he was pretty good in it? He, he was, you know what? I thought he was halfway decent. I didn't think yeah. he was. Great he pulled play. it like, off. I mean, it was a it remake. Off. Yeah, it was right. a remake. So there was only but, so uh, much he could do. But this 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 character, I mean, he's really embraced it and he's done well. So I mean, it mm-hmm. it's definitely good. I mean, it's it's. Season one really had me because there was a lot of twists and turns in that one. Yeah. Um, and it was multiple, so it it was just good, uh, from top to bottom. I mean, you had good actors. Mm-hmm. Um, they had some, uh, they had some uh, surprising. There was this one actress that I was surprised to see there. She was in like some of these little kitty uh, movies. She's in like Percy Jackson or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, she's in this uh, you know very hardcore detective story and. 
You know, next thing you know, she's showing front. So I'm like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Woody Harrelson and McConaughey made that first one. I mean, it was so yeah. good. Um, I still, see, I still have to watch it. I wanted to. I just keep forgetting to. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 really good. So yeah, I would definitely recommend it. You know, if you if you're into that kind of stuff, it's it's a definitely good storyline. It doesn't leave you hanging or nothing like that. You know, it's real good. Mm-hmm. So I, I've been getting into that, and um, I I got to start catching up with my agents this year. I kind of left that in the back burner. No, oh, dude, I haven't even finished the first season yet. I gave uh, up on that so long ago. <laughs> well, I, I'm 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 in the I left off the middle of the first season, and the thing is, like, I want to continue to watch it, but I'm going to have to go back and watch the whole first season again because I can't remember what the hell I was, <laughs> was going on. Dude, first season, there wasn't nothing going on. It was yeah, nothing. but it's, it's, I hate it because, like, there's not a lot going so. on. Yeah, I, and I've been going over it because I, I, I tried to watch the whole first season twice, right? And I think the episode that I got to. Um, where I always just kind of lose interest is supposedly one or two episodes right before uh, that moment when um, I think it was not, Thor not the, the Thor. Dark War. Yeah, yeah. it was like uh, right before all that stuff that's went where down. I left off. Yeah, that I didn't was basically want, where like, I stopped. They were like, don't watch it because if you don't see Thor first, it's going to kind of mess you up. I right. said, okay. Mm-hmm. And after I watched Thor, I just stopped watching it. Right, exactly. That's what I did. I was like, done. Yeah, pretty much. I was. That's it. They, I had no interest after that. Mm-hmm. And then I and think they had another moment when they had uh, Captain, what was America. It? Captain America, where it right. supposedly got even better. And now, what's her name? Is supposedly has powers and stuff like that. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm debating whether I should should go back to that or not. And uh, yeah, and I don't trying. know. Somebody will have somebody will have to like sit me down and and want to watch it for me to watch it at this point because i've got too many other ones that i want to watch. right there's shows that i'm watching and you know I'm, I'm i'll be waiting for them um there's another show on hbo which is freaking hilarious it's called the brink <laughs> mm-hmm. uh it's with um uh jack black and um oh that political that Dude, little political is, comedy thing with him it as is, a yeah, it's it's only a delegate a half hour. or something like that. Yeah, it's only a half an hour show, but it's freaking funny, man. I mean, if you're yeah. if, if our government actually runs like that, we're in a whole lot of shit. <laughs> 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 so it, it that's another really good show on HBO that's that's been catching my eye. I did a quick little binge watch on that, mm-hmm. and um, it was uh, it was pretty good. So. That that's another one to, uh, that's been keeping my attention there. Of course, uh, you know we're all waiting for The Walking Dead. So, <laughs> oh, you mean you waiting for Fear of The Walking Dead? Uh, either or. I mean, they're coming up pretty soon. That what? Yeah, I think Fear something? The Walking Dead is coming in September, and I think Walking Dead. See, that's what I don't get. I don't know when if they're both going to overlap, or. Is one going to run and then the other one starts or something? I can't remember I would the think, timeline. I, yeah, I think they're going to overlap. So. Really? Yeah, because I think Fear the Walking Dead is is about to start um, next month in September. Okay. And you know, and you know, the Walking Dead usually starts in October around right. around the yeah. same time as Comic Con. So yeah. So yeah, I, you know, I think they're going to be running concurrently. Which is odd, but okay. So I don't know, I'll have to to check that out and see whether that's true or not, but I think it is coming out in like a month or so. But I have been binge-watching the crap out of Orange is the New Black. Dude, I've, I've gone through basically the first two seasons in the last three weeks. Yeah. Now, is that two I, you know what I have it on my Netflix queue, mm-hmm. and I want to watch it. But Dude, it's good. I know it's good, that but good, that that thing is so good. And what see, I think I, I like never, a lot, I never leave my room, man. I can't. I know. I, so I, actually, my wife kind of got my wife kind of got upset with me because I was I was coming home, and as I was cooking, I had my Kindle 
Uh-huh. So I was sitting while I was cooking at the table watching, you know, watching episodes and stuff like that. And then after I would finish eating, I'd go in the other room and I'd watch another episode. And them and things see, are an hour I long. I just keep going. Right. And that's what I'm that's what I've been doing with True Detective, right? Like I uh-huh. go upstairs and because it's all on demand, I just flip to the T V upstairs in the kitchen. Which uh-huh. was a bad idea. I didn't want a TV in my kitchen, but it's there. But now I'm actually liking it because I'm actually watching shows there. Yeah. Boom, hit it up. There you go. Boom, I'm on it again. <laughs> I'm cooking. And, of course, there's some things in there. And I'm like, ah, I got to turn it off because what if one of the kids walk by? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Click. <laughs> oh, can't see that. <laughs> That's for daddy. Oh, <laughs> oh real quick. Um, Fear the Walking Dead is going to be their pilot is going to be Sunday, August twenty third. For Fear the Walking Dead. Fear the Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah, Constance is asking if we seen Mister Robot. No, but I heard a lot of people say that it is really, really, really good. Like a hacker, you know, it's like one of those hacker shows where you know that Mr. Robot is the hacker or whatever but he's like you know, I, I a heard Batman that. What, kind what, of hacker or something what, like that. What uh what channels are running on? Um it's on one of the regular channels I think. Um like one of the regular cable channels? Yeah, um, it's on USA. Oh, okay. Yeah, I heard it is really I've heard a lot of people talk about it and say that it's really really good. Oh, well, I got to check to see if it's on on demand. I like hacking shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I heard it's good. I heard it's really good. A constant um, good looking out for that. I didn't know about that, but I would definitely check that out. Yes, yes. Uh, that's that's my next show after I finish finish watching. Uh, what you call it? Um, Orange is New Black. Yeah, or, yeah. Because I'm on like third season now, and I I'm hoping I can finish that by the end of the week. Hoping, 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 hoping. hoping. Um, Let's see. Epis I mean season six for The Walking Dead. Yeah, season six for Walking Dead starts October eleventh. Yeah, so you assume Yeah, you just gotta assume it's gonna be overlapping then. Mm-hmm. But you know how they do. They do like a few episodes. They do like eight episodes and then they pause until right. like February and February then they do and the then next they you, right. the next eight. So you get pissed off because you're like, Oh, I just got into it. Son of a gotta wait till next year. Well, that's the only thing about <laughs> The Walking Dead. They you know, they, they they do drag out a lot of stuff. They have good things and when it starts getting hot then they cut you off, so Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's a little disappointing there, but But another show that I probably won't be watching but I'm still interested in Xena Warrior Princess may be coming back. Really? Yes. Who's going to be playing uh, the Amazon? Uh, who you think? Lucy Lawless. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't she's she like she's going to reprise her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She probably, she's 50-something, I know. But what I think is Dude, I gotta interesting. I got to look that up, man. That's kind of crazy. So. Yeah, I think they said that NBC might pick it up, but apparently there's a lot of interest in, you know, she... She was all hype about it at uh, San Diego Comic Con, telling people that if she couldn't, that she wants to redo the role, she wants to redo it, and that if she had to, she'd start a Kickstarter in order to get it going. And then, like within like a week, I was seeing articles saying that NBC is in talks with her to try to see if they can bring it back to TV. Yeah, here it is, NBC. Mm-hmm. Tina Warrior Princess yes, reboot. Sir. But you know what I'm really looking forward to? On Stars. Ash versus the Evil Dead, dude, that looks so good. I'm did you see that. like? Did you see? Did you see the trailer for it? You should look up the trailer for it. Um, they were showing it at uh, San Diego Comic Con, uh-huh. and it looks funny as hell. You know, it's it's like it's like classic um, over the top horror comedy, <laughs> just like you know, just like, uh, just like Army of Darkness. Dead. Yeah, Army of Darkness, Evil Dead. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's just classic. And what's his name? Um, I swear I can never remember his his name. Ah, uh, and I feel bad every time I forget it. Um, oh, who the guy that was in the um the original? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, Bruce Campbell. Yeah, Bruce Campbell. That's it. That's his name. He's he's gonna be you know he's gonna be the same role and he's got a couple other younger cast members or whatever that'll be on there. But of course every episode they'll have like guest appearances by other people as like you know monsters or zombies or whatever. And of course it'll have you know it'll have a big budget kind of special effects. So the special effects will be kind of corny, but you know you can still see <laughs> that they're good. 
Yeah, you know, it's like a good kind of corny. Right. So, you know, and they're, it's going to be like really bloody and all kinds of stuff. So I, I really want to see that. Um, have they said when that's going to start yet? But it's going to be on it's going to be on stars. Um, they're going to be like 30 minutes. Oh, it, it's going to start on Halloween. OK. On well, Saturday. have you heard this other this other show, you know, guys at work's been uh, talking to me about have I've, if I've watched it called Power. Power. On, yeah, it's on it's either on Showtime or Stars. Mm hmm. That they're talking about, and they've been. Tr I've been trying to figure out what this, this show is about. And uh, Mike at work, he's been binge. -watching. Of course, that's what uh, IMDb is. Power on stars. It's either on stars or Showtime. Because I know there's, there's, because uh, the power that I know of is the one that Fifty Cent basically was a part of. You know, he's the he's like the executive producer of. But I don't think that's the one you're talking about. Though. No. Power. Power TV show. Yeah, it's on Stars. Well, yeah, that's the one I'm talking about, though. That's the one that's executive produced by 50, 50 Cent. <laughs> well, it can't be because he broke and he don't have no money and it's all for show. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a loop. Give it a loop. Yep, that's the one. They said it that that show really? Was really good. Wow. Yeah. I heard that I, shoot, I heard the first season was garbage. But I really? guess it got better. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm talking about people at work. They binge watching, man. They are they're hardcore really? on that. They're like, "Yeah." I'm like, "Really?" Power. So, yeah, it's kind of making me want to, you know, want to check that out a little bit there. I don't know, man. I think it might be a different power. <laughs> no, I it's it's no, it's just when I'm looking at it and it's it's the same, yeah, the same one that they're talking about because they were they were, you know, some of the girls were drooling over that one dude in there. <laughs> oh, the black dude. Yeah, yeah, he is diesel. Yeah, he is. He's he's like a mini Morris chestnuts. <laughs> chestnuts. <laughs> oh man. Uh. But yes, yes, lots of TV shows, lots of TV shows. Got to get into lots of TV shows. Ugh. But we are in how to and oh. yes, and what I really kind of wanted to do. Um, you know, it's July. We're really halfway through. You know, we're halfway through the year for the most part, so we're starting to see the lull of you know a lot of the games and stuff so i kind of wanted to go over a quick list of the games that are still about to come out and then after we go over those and talk about which ones we're most interested in for this year um kind of see if we can center in on some of our favorites from the first half of the year you know what i mean um not necessarily even do like a awards thing but at least just say notables and disappointments from the first part of the year they were. Um, so, in in spirit of what I was talking before, uh, still ready to come out um, in 2015. Uh, we have Rare Replay, which will be out in um, August, which is an Xbox One exclusive that has all the old school um, Rare as a developer games that has like um, uh, Conquer. Uh, Crash Bandicoot, uh, Perfect Dark, um, there's a whole bunch of them, there's like 30 of them in there, uh, for like 30 bucks, a lot of, it's, it's really, it's gotten a lot of steam because I've seen on, uh, Amazon that it's like one of the highest, uh, pre-ordered games, uh, that's still on the new release, you know, upcoming or coming soon release list, uh, for the rest of the year so far. Um, Dishonored, the Definitive Edition, is coming August 25th. Don't do it. <laughs> uh, Gears of War, the Ultimate Edition, is also coming out the same day, August 25th. Suspect. <laughs> of course, Madden NFL 16. Um, a weird little teenage slasher game, um called until dawn that people have been talking about it's kind of a horror 
Yeah, that's, that's kind of a hard game. I think that's going to be a good game. Uh, Mad Max. Everyone's really, really, really psyched about this one. Um, there's been a lot so of good buzz. There's been a lot of good buzz around this. That's packed. Yeah, definitely suspect. Anytime there's a lot of buzz, but we'll see. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 5, also September 1st. Big time, big time. I think this is going to be a fantastic game that I may I actually so. get. And I'm hoping that it doesn't require you to sit through two hours of cutscenes. And you know this, man. man. <laughs> um, Tearaway Unfolded, for those who like Tearaway on the PS Fizzo. Actually, I think this is a Vita exclusive. Oh, no, it, it used to be a, a Vita exclusive. Now it's coming to PS4. Um, Super Mario Maker. A lot of people love Super Mario. So now you can make your own levels. Yay, Mario. Uh, for all the Destiny heads out there, The Taking King in mid-September is supposed to be coming with loads and loads of new maps, modes, um, weapons and all kinds of stuff and this is not included in the season pass this is a whole new huge chapter of destiny so um a lot of destiny people are psyched about that now see that you answered my question but i just think that's a rip yo um apparently this is not going to be the rip that the other dlcs have been from what they've been talking about because a lot of I've seen this thing. It's like seventy four bucks. Yes. So is it an is it an expansion? Uh, technically yes, but it's being I guess marketed almost as if it's the next phase of Destiny. And that's so what it's I mean. Built it's upon it's built upon Destiny, but it's supposed to be like, uh, you know how the other DLCs have mostly been. Um, hey, there's like this one new strike, this one new raid, and a couple of new weapons and a few new maps. Well, this is supposed to have a lot of new maps, a bunch of new modes, um, more strikes, more classes, more gear. You know, it's supposed to be a true expansion rather than just a little DLC pack, which is what has been in the season passes before. Okay, so basically, like if you didn't have Destiny, you'd have to buy Destiny to install this. Yes. Yes, you still have. I think if you don't have Destiny and you get Destiny: The Taken King, then you get everything. Oh, okay. But if you have Destiny, then you have to. I think you have to pay for this as like another expansion. But I don't think you have to pay the seventy four dollars if you already have Destiny. I think gotcha. the seventy four dollars is only for those people if who you don't, don't have, have Destiny at all. I think. That so. game is just such a disappointment. That's why I haven't even been following that. I keep seeing it, and I'm like, ugh, you guys are horrible. <laughs> that that thing, you know, they give you half a game, and then they, by the time you get all the DLCs for the other stuff, even if you bought the season pass plus this, dude, you paid for like two, three and a half games. That sucks. Yep. That's that's really shitty because, you know what, shame on you, Bungie. You know, I got I to gotta give my shout out to CD Projekt Red because they they're doing it right, you know. They give you your season pass. They're giving you about. Well, it's a different what? kind of game, though. That it is a different like kind of game. Apples and oranges, kind of, sort of. Because I mean, no, it, it, no, this it is. is. I'm not talking about game. I'm just talking about concepts and ripping. You <laughs> <catch> ripping. <me. laughs> that, that's just basically what it is. What I'm saying is like, okay, it doesn't matter what the game is or what it is, but like, dude, they first of all they give you a half game. Like what they told you you were getting and what you actually got, people. Uh, what the hell is this, right? And it was like the game is like unfinished. That that thing is just small. But what I'm like like a CD Projekt Red, what they do is you know what I'm saying. They give, they're giving you 16 free pieces of DLC, which is awesome. I mean, they're not great stuff. You know, they may give you some armor here, you know, a new skin here. But they're giving you the, and the actual stuff that you're paying for. It's huge. It's it's freaking huge. You're getting 10 to 20 hours per. Per DLC, and you're getting two of them. Okay, so you can either get the season pass, save a little, a few bucks there, or you can buy them as they come if you want them or not. And that that's like what things should be, not like these little quirky things that you have. And then when you go to their stupid Destiny store, you got to buy more shit too. 
So, uh, it, well, it's an it, MMO. That it's it's a cash grab. That's how all MMOs are anyway. They're gonna make you pay not for like it. these guys, man. Yo, they are. Yo, they are. No, uh, Destiny oh. is not as much of a cash grab as a lot of the other MMOs I've seen. Destiny is light when it comes to cash grab. Destiny is light when it comes to that. Now, I've seen some much worse uh, economic ways. For you know them to to kind well, of I know they you even have like some of that stuff with MMOs, but half of those MMOs, those games are free to you know they're free up to a certain point. Mm-hmm. You know, well, like, some of them. Yeah, so and some, some of them. Of them no. Some of them have become free to play after being paid. You know, after you have have to pay for a subscription for a while or whatever. So some have evolved to the point where okay, now if you buy the game, you just play, and some are now just complete free to play. But whatever. We got uh, more games. We got more games. Destiny. Okay. Destiny. Um, Forza Motorsport. For all you racing fans out there, the next one is coming out uh, September fifteenth. Mighty Number no. Nine, which is made by the which is basically another kind of Mega Man Mega game Man. without calling it Mega Man. Um, by the man fun. who made Mega Man. <laughs> actually, I actually saw some of the gameplay for that. I was like, ooh, mm-hmm. it looks fresh. It really yeah. does. Um, FIFA 16, for those of you who finally want to play as the women teams, you can play soccer on 56, F- FIFA 16 That's right. uh, with all the women teams. With solo hope. That's right. Um, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 at the end of September will be coming out. They still make Tony Hawk games? Uh, not really. This is like the first one in years, really. Yeah, so I thought they stopped because Tony Hawk Yeah, is like- they did. Because like, after, I think the debacle that they had was one that was called Hawk that had an actual board that you were supposed to use with the connector or something stupid like that, and it ended up just crapping out. It was it was god awful. Um, of course, NBA 16, the 29th, and I think uh, NBA Live comes out the same day, I think, or like yeah, a week yeah. before or something like that. No, they're actually the same day, 29th. Same day? Okay. Yes, sir. Um, adrift. Which is, if people remember in E3, that game where uh, you were like in a spacesuit and you just see breathing and you're floating and you're trying to grasp different like oxygen tanks and stuff because your space station exploded or something like that. I can't remember exactly what all it was supposed to be. But Adrift is coming out uh, apparently still this year. They haven't. That just sounds like this movie I was watching the other day. (laughs) Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It had Sandra Bullock in it and everything. Yes, 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 it does. And you get to see a dead George Clooney. Spoiler! (laughs) Spoiler alert! Um, Disgaea 5 Alliance of Vengeance, which is like a Japanese. RPG tactics kind of game. They've made a whole bunch of these things. Uh, but it's very popular. It's coming out in October on my birthday. Uh, Rock Band 4 is also coming out on my birthday. Yeah, boy. And um, actually, I saw something that, and I don't know if we've even talked about this yet, but um, the one supposedly new feature that they have for Rock Band is. And I kind of saw this when they were doing the uh, that Fantasia game. Did you ever see or play the Fantasia game that uh, Harmonix did? Yeah, that looked, <clears throat> that looked pretty cool. Yeah, it's okay. Um, one of the interesting concepts in that one, though, was they always had a portion of a song where it allowed, where it allowed you to freestyle. So as you did different things on Fantasia with your hands, you could alter certain parts of the track and cue certain parts of a track to kind of have like your own little spin on the song in like a part of the bridge or a part of the breakdown in the song right and so they kind of i guess i'm guessing they took a part of that technology and they incorporated it in rock band 4 because now the free the uh some of the um guitar solos Rather than them just being you, you know, following the track, you know, and doing as it says there, they actually have a freestyle solo portion of the uh, guitar solos now. So it allows you to kind of play around with the chords and play around and you can you you can do hammer ons, you can do all kinds of stuff on it. And it actually sounds relatively good if you do it right. 
and um, it's it's kind of interesting. You know, it's like a new spin on you know what they what they have had before. And um, they decided also to get rid of the keyboard since nobody was really using the keyboard. So, um, but again, they're still using all the old all the old instrumentation and everything. But yes, Rock Band Four coming out October sixth. Um, a few days after that, Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection, will be dropping for the PS4 with yep. remastered visuals at 1080p, 60 frames per second, and all kinds of stuff. Access Ripping. to the multiplayer beta, okay. access to the multiplayer beta, which is mm-hmm. supposed to be sometime Ripping. this year as well. Can you say Ray Bitch? Of course. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege with, um... Uh, what's her name? Oh, goodness. I saw it in, uh... Was it E3? No, it was E4. E3. Um, Angela Bassett. She is in Rainbow Six Siege as one of the characters. So, um, that's dropping October 13th. Oh, that's good, because some of those Rainbow Sixes haven't been good in the past. Mm-hmm. I had a couple of good ones, and, like, the last few were just like, meh. <laughs> meh. <laughs> Uh, Yoshi's Woolly World, October 16th. Yoshi. For those we, we, you people. We who? Uh, Guitar Hero Live, October 20th, is coming out. I think I might skip out. that one. Um, I don't know. Some of the stuff they've been talking about on it sound, um, sounds like it's pretty interesting. But, yeah, I don't necessarily want to buy another $100 worth of new gear and equipment for a game. Like yeah, I hope but they, I, if I get it for Christmas, I'm not going to complain. I hope they do like they did with the other one, where you know when they got down the road, some of the uh, the equipment they just work cross um, system, uh, not system, but cross games. Nope, not going to be that way. the The Guitar Hero One controller, uh, their setup is completely different than uh, the Rock Band one. It's going to be just very, very different. So you aren't going to be able to use it. Uh, that kind like of stinks. Uh, the new Assassin's Creed will be coming out at the end of October. Syndicate, skipping it. <laughs> skipping it. Halo 5 Guardians, October 27th. I am totally all, getting it. I am all <laughs> over this. That's right. I already pre-ordered, baby. <laughs> <Make it black. laughs> uh, WWE 2K16, October 27th. Um, Did they of course, they will Hulk not Hogan be having. It? Yeah, I'm pretty certain they dropped Hulk Hogan from it, so that definitely will not be something that they will have in this edition. For I'm those like, of you oh, who don't know, uh, no Hulkamaniacs. Yeah, Hulk Hogan apparently had a video from I think it was like eight years ago, him doing some kind of racist rant that somebody caught him on, and it was all over YouTube. And uh, they've taken it down since then, but uh, it did the damage it had to, of course. And um, he promptly got fired from WWE. And amongst certain, other things. Yeah, amongst <laughs> other things. So, Kind of feel bad for him. That's kind of dirty trying to, you know, uh, torture a guy eight years later. Well, I mean, I don't know. It, it's, it's When it's there, it's there. You know what I mean? I know, but, I mean, you know, eight years... They, they should have a statute of limitation on that, too. I'm certain, I mean, I'm certain whoever had the video, they probably did. It was probably one of those where they paid him off, and then they just got tired of it. He wouldn't give them any more money, so they were like, oh, word? Pop! <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Hold that. That's right. Hold that. <laughs> People need to know. <laughs> uh, need for Speed. The new Need for Speed will be dropping at the beginning of November. The new Call of Duty, Black Ops 3, will be dropping as well. Right, Treyarch. Um, Fallout Foe will be a few days after that, November 10th. Will be Fallout 4 and definitely. Oh, yeah, I'll definitely have that rather than Call of Duty. I'll probably pass on Call of Duty this year. Um, Actually, I would, I I probably, I like the Treyarch Call of Duty better than all of them. Mm-hmm. So I'm 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 lo- kind of looking forward to that. I hope you know because they, they they usually give you good stuff. Mm-hmm. November yeah. is gonna suck balls, dude. Jeez, freaking what, Fallout nothing? Four. Well, l- l- listen to this: Fallout Four, November tenth. Rise of the Tomb Raider, November tenth. Star Wars Battlefront, November seventeenth. Oh. Call of Duty, Black Ops Three, November sixth. Dude, November is stocked. 
stocked. Okay, so they almost they they got they got two hundred and something dollars from me already. Right, and then of course freaking Halo Five is like at the end of October, so you're it's like you're done. Every week yeah, about, you're buying a new game. Yeah, I'm about three hundred dollars deep already. Freaking sucks. And I then of course up. XCOM Two is coming out also. Um, I think this one is going to remain a PC exclusive, so maybe that one won't be too expensive, but. That'll be quarter four this year. I'm definitely getting that. Um, damn, that's a lot of money. Goodness. Yeah. And yeah. that's not even it. There's still stuff coming out in December. Um, Just Cause 3. Um, you know what? Those... That, that surprisingly looked really good. Oh, it looks great. Jeez. I, so I, I, I think I might want that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely want that. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles X import for those who love massive open world role playing games. Um, that one is, you know, it's out in Japan, but those Xenoblade Chronicles games, they always take a long time to get over here to Western audiences, but it's coming in December. Uh, the new Hitman also drops. Um, supposedly, No Man's Sky is dropping this year, but I've got a feeling that. a lot of, um, I think that one's going to get delayed. It looks just... It looks pretty good, dude. Oh, I want it, but I have to get a PS4 first. (laughs) Um, Another game below, as well as another one called... It's not coming out for the Xbox? What? No Man's Sky? Yeah. No, that's a PS4 exclusive. Oh, okay. Sorry, buddy. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I know, I know. Um, The Witness... I haven't heard anything about that, but that can I get a witness? Coming. Hyper Light Drifter. Don't know what that RPG is. RPG that is coming out. Uh, Firewatch, which is a first-person exploration game. Um, Legend of Zelda: Triforce Heroes for the 3DS will be coming out this year. Star Fox Zero apparently is still set to come out this year. Persona 5 for those anime JRPG lovers is coming out also this year still. Um, and I'm sure I'm missing something, but for the most part, I think that is all of it. Goodness. That's a lot. A lot That's of a lot. Yeah, oh November. There is a lot of games. November stacked. Ugh. Uh, hey, you. Not gonna be able to get a lot of those. <laughs> but yes, hey, what's going on, Cybercat? Welcome, 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 welcome. You. Um. So, Thicken Nation, last mm-hmm. half hour. Um. This past year, this half, this what past six months or whatever has seen a lot. A lot, a lot of games. Yes, they have. Um, so let me see if I can see a list so we can remember what all video game releases 2015. Let's see what we got here. Um, there's been a lot of really good games. There's been a lot of really good, uh, not even good, but there's been a lot of misses, disappointments as well. <laughs> no, that didn't come out this year. That came out last year. Oh, it's still around this year with their DLCs and stuff, so they still suck. Um, we have stuff like let's see. Early in the year, we had um no, that wasn't big. One of the first big games that dropped Saints Row. Um, Saints Row that- Four. Was that Bat Out of Hell or some whatever it was called? Oh, well, one of them was Gat Out of Hell. Gat Out of Hell. hell. Yeah, yeah, and then they did Saints Row 4 uh, Reelected, which was only next gen. Yeah, I dropped um, Saints Row a long time ago. From 2, that was it. Something well, from my understanding, 3 was supposed to be pretty good, really good, but 4, they just kind of went a little bit too. too uh, Arcadey. You know, yeah, it was like they started adding superpowers and stuff like that, and that kind of destroyed the whole Grand Theft Auto experience because rather than using vehicles and stuff like that, everyone could fly around and do stuff, so they were like it kind of, you know, it destroyed the whole point of the game. 
Um, let's see, what else was big that dropped? Dying Light was one of the first big games. I love, 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 love that game. Yes, Dying Great Light game. was actually pretty good. Um, it, was a, it was a little short. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it was a little short, but... A little short. Still, still fun. Still, still fun. fun. Yeah, you could drag it out if you wanted to. Yeah, there's a lot of exploring, so if you wanted to get some goodies, you can run around for hours getting some good stuff. Mm -hmm. Um... Game of Thrones by Telltale Games was doing its thing. I actually, I, I which I've been it. playing. Oh my gosh, it's, what, it's what's uh, a season you're on? I'm, I'm still on one. Um, I well, it. I think they've only they're only on season one. They haven't released season two yet. I don't think. Oh, is it episodes though? Yeah, it's episodic, and I yeah, think so they're I'm, like in episode I, six or six, seven. Yeah, right? okay, I think that's probably what I meant to say. But I'm on. Uh, I'm still on episode one. I got one of the one of oh, the okay. three. Mm -hmm. so I, I think I'm at other. episode three right now. Yeah, no, I, no. I actually enjoy it. I mean, there's not a lot of clickety-clacking, but it's pretty good. Oh, man. I mean, it's one of those because you love the characters, yeah. and you're seeing some of the characters, especially the villains, in you know, in this version of Game of Thrones. It just makes it all the while. You know, it kind of expands yeah. on what you've already yeah, seen. Yeah, it expands to what you got. You know, the little side stories are good. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I like how it started off. Got a little little background on things that were happening outside the castle. Uh, yeah, thing, yeah, you know. it's good. It, yeah, it's so it good. I, I gotta finish that one. Um, Evolve, which was a big disappointment. Completely, I hated it. I was so psyched for that when I saw the, the trailer. I bought it, though. I bought it for, like, uh, six bucks. <laughs> yeah, I still can't do it. Because you know what will happen? The, I get caught up with that. I'll buy a game that I didn't really want in the first place, and I got it for cheap. Mm. And then it'll just sit there. So oh, I've been playing it. I've been playing it. It's it. I, it's enough for me. I mean, when I was playing the beta, I enjoyed it because me personally, all I wanted to do was run around as Godzilla and eat people anyway. <laughs> I so I had fun doing that. So that was I all like I needed. I, I I had no desire to play that game. <laughs> thumbs down for thickenation. A oh, big time. If I had four thumbs, you'd get all four of them. And then, not too long after that, which was another big one that I know Makita was very was very high on, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate for the 3DS, which was a big game for quite some time. Yes, I don't have a 3DS, about. but I heard that game was the chisnuts. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, there was also, for those who like... Um, let's see. Well, there was also the order eighteen eighty six that dropped. Yes, that and I heard that was uh, visually that was kind pleasing. Of a bust, kind of a bust. People were not very pleased. With yeah, that. and Even that was it wasn't necessarily game. bad. They just didn't get what they expected. Yep, I think that was like another destiny there. So, I I, I, I want to actually play it. Um, but it's it's down to like forty bucks now, so I'm gonna wait till oh, it gets yeah, like till it gets yeah. Finished. I'm waiting till at least like nineteen ninety nine, and then I'll think about it. <laughs> and then the game that to this day I excuse me, I still really, really, really want to play with a passion, but I'm waiting for it to drop in price. But I don't think it's going to because it's so popular, and it's actually good from what I've been hearing. Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Very, 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 very good. I've seen a lot of people play this on Twitch, and a lot of the Dragon Ball fans say that this is the definitive Dragon Ball video game, and you're able to create your own, like, fighter character or whatever to, like, go through the storyline and do all this other kind of stuff. So I really, really, really want to play that one. Um, I'll probably end up getting it on Gamefly, just try it out, and then keep that for, like, six months before I decide to buy it. <laughs> um... Then we have, let's see, uh, the remastered version of Homeworld kind of made its splash in uh, near the end of February um, for all those that were had nostalgia for that strategic um, game. Um, I used to love that game. I played a, I played it a lot. Um, let's see here. Then of course, Five Nights at Freddy's three dropped at the beginning of March to kind of continue its scary uh, persona or whatever. It's its reign in the whole uh, horror survival genre. Um, 
Then there was games like Hell Divers, Resident Evil Rev- Revelations 2, um, Scream Ride, which actually surprised some people and was pretty decent. Um, let's see. Assassin's Creed Rogue dropped. Um, do, 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 do. That didn't make any news. That didn't make any news. Ori and the Blind Forests. Um, Sid Meier's Starships was kind of a letdown for a lot of people from what I heard. Uh, they were hoping for it to be a lot more in depth and a lot more robust of a strategy game, just like all like Alpha Centauri and all his other games. But apparently, it wasn't intense enough. Uh, then another disappointment: Battlefield Hardline dropped in the yes. middle of March. I actually picked that up for like thirty bucks, and uh, the single player isn't bad. Uh, multiplayer is very disappointing. They, you know, shrunk the maps out and just. Mm-hmm. And just for those other people who want to know on GameFly, if you have an account, it is on sale. You can get it for under twenty bucks, which I might do. Um, do 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 do. Tales of the Border from the Borderlands. I haven't heard too much about that, but that's been that's um, was dropping earlier this year as well. Was that part of that? Wasn't part of the Handsome Jack collection, was it? No, no, that was the Telltale um, version, the episodic okay. one. Okay. Uh, then there was, of course, what Jason just said: Borderlands, the Handsome Collection. Um, I'm still playing through that, man. There's so much in that game, or in those games. All those DLCs are so big and so much fun, anyway. Did they spruce great. it up a little bit? I, I oh yeah, yeah. Fun. The the frame rate is awesome in it. Um, and, uh, the weird thing was, you know, because we had played on Borderlands 2, when I first got it, imported over my game save uh-huh. from my Xbox 360, Yeah, it gave me 99 golden keys. So it was like, I did, I, I do not, I never need another golden key as long as I play this game because they just gave me 99 just for porting it over. So you know when you know when you go to the golden chest and getting all the real special weapons and stuff out of them, dude, uh-huh. I was just going cling 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 cling. I was just getting <laughs> them all over the place, dude. It was crazy. So yes, it, Borderlands: The Handsome Collection is well worth the money. It's a lot of fun. Um, I think they, I think the part of it that makes it worth it, even for those who have it on like 360 or PS3, is that it has local co-op, where okay. the other one, the other one did not. Right. So, I, in my eyes, it makes it worth it because I mean that's what that's Borderlands Two, with all of the DLC as well as Borderlands the pre sequel, with all of its oh, DLC. DLC. And how much was that? Like, like 40, um, I want to say I think that was like fifty. I think it was like fifty bucks. I don't think it was sixty. I think it was like fifty or something like that. But that's still pretty good. Yeah, it's a, it's a good deal with all that DLC, dude. That's a lot of game. <laughs> yeah. Was, and then yeah, of course the, the, the game by itself isn't short, so right, yeah. That's, yeah that's um, cool. and then of course Bloodborne for all those PS4 uh, Dark Souls lovers, that was yeah. a big game. I heard that was an awesome game. If you mm-hmm. like that thing, you know I heard me. that I was, was very very good. Frustrating, uh, so I did not go ahead. And <laughs> <play it. laughs> Um, then there was another role-playing game that got a lot of really, really good um, feedback. Pillars of Eternity, uh, only for PC. For those of you who like uh, the old-school uh, Baldur's Gate kind of isometric, real-time role-playing game view, um, that one was supposedly really good. Um, let's see here. Then we had... Uh, games like the free-to-play Neverwinter that dropped on the Xbox One. Neverwinter is friggin' awesome. Um, MLB The Show. Another friggin' awesome game. <laughs> Don't hate. Um, then we had... Um, let's see, what was next? Mortal Kombat X was the next big one. I picked that up for cheap at uh, Wally World, and I've been having fun playing it. 
I bought me a little bit of Jason and a couple other characters. I'm having mm-hmm. a good time with that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, let's see. They finally released the PC version of Grand Theft Auto V. <laughs> Yes. And then they dropped. Let's see what was the next one? No, no, no. Um, no, no. That wasn't a big game. You know, a bunch of little games here and there. Some remakes. Wolfenstein. Was it Wolfenstein: The Old Blood, which was pretty good. From what Did I've you play that? Here. No, I, I watched a lot of people play it. Um, you know, if if you had the other one, because it, it's it's like a standalone game, but it was made with the same game engine as the other Wolfenstein game that came out. When was that? Last year? Late last oh, okay. year? So I heard a lot of people say it was still it was still good. Um, what's up? Uh, what, what's that? Clock clock owns. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, homie? What's up, clock on? Will you see some nice BBC in the stream? Uh, probably not. I don't mm. know. What the hell is BBC? You know what BBC is? I don't know. I'm too old. Uh, that, no, it's uh, English. British. <laughs> oh, BBC channel? <laughs> yeah. Stop I, doubt what, I doubt that's what they're talking about. <laughs> Big Black Christians. Uh, Not that BBC. I'm sorry. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. well, yeah, we're nice. I, I'm one. I mean, I'm I'm about you know I'm six one six two roughly around there. And I'm about yeah, two twenty. I'm not 20. big, so I, I you can see some and I black Christian, Christian. So there you go. <laughs> but um, let's see. What's up, Nick Cotty? <laughs> Um, we also had a few remasters of Final Fantasy that came out. As well, Project Cars came out. Um, Galactic Civilizations three, Witcher three, this is awesome big game. game. How are you doing in that game? Did you finish yet? No, you know what? I'm still stuck because um, or like around the time when we were talking about where I was before was when I left. It was when the boys came. Okay. And then we went on vacation, and I haven't played it since. I played okay. I, I played a little bit like last weekend or whatever, but every weekend I've been going someplace and doing something, so I haven't had a whole lot of haven't had a whole lot of time to get back into it. I'm still I'm still in at like level eighteen doing story missions that are like a level eleven or twelve right now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I uh, I actually finished the main quest. Mm-hmm. I finished all the side quests, <laughs> almost all the side quests. <laughs> finished all right. the contracts. Uh, I'm like a level 35. I think the only thing I have left to do, which I don't want to do, is like the card games, the Gwent, and <laughs> some of the horse races. Oh, Lord. Yeah. So I'm just running around and clearing out all the question marks. Mm-hmm. I've, I've done a lot of those, too, so... There's not right. much more I got to go unless I get some uh, DLC going there. <laughs> so. Let's see. What other big games did we have? Like, near the end of May, we had Splatoon. Uh, then we had uh, The Escapist, which was an independent game that dropped. We had Elder Scrolls Online that finally dropped. <laughs> <laughs> that, when was that, not- last month? Yeah, that. Well, uh, well, let me rephrase that. It finally dropped on consoles. Yeah, I, right. I got it for cheap at Wally World. Well, not cheap, but cheaper. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, then of course uh, Payday Two, which a few people were looking for on consoles. Um, Batman: Arkham Knight dropped in, in the May near the end of June. Sorry, uh, Planet Side Two finally got released. On the PS4, I think that's free to play, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's free to play. Uh. And um, you know, then we've got a few more uh, like this month or whatever. Not necessarily big games, but a few more that are coming out this year. But dude, there's been a lot of games, a lot of pretty pretty good games uh, this first half of the year. So tell me, tell me, tell me, 
which one aside from freaking Witcher 3? Because I know that's your answer. That's been your answer since like last November. But it <laughs> is your favorite game. <laughs> it is. So it's... other than Witcher 3, give me give me your your um best you know your your best game or at least your most anticipated because i know there's games on there that have dropped that you haven't had a chance to play or check out that you're either that you wish you could play or that you played and you loved uh well yes uh beef uh there i do go on about uh witcher 3 it is a good game (laughs) um but um any, I don't know, man. You got you got a lot of good stuff coming up that I haven't played. That that might be better, you know, than Witcher Three. I mean, I'm thinking like Battlefront, maybe. But um, I mean, there's not not a lot of games that I've 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 dived that deep into. Um, you know, this this year that like I did Witcher Three. I mean, like I I I played that game. I probably put like a good 150 hours into it, easily. You know, so mm-hmm. that's that's got to be like you know, probably that's that's it, man. That's all I got. That's like that's like the number one game by far. I mean, the only other things are games that I you know I'll roll back to like sports games. Mm-hmm. You know, every once in a while I'll play a little Madden. Of course, I played my uh, my season at MLB the Show, so I hit that pretty hard. Um... I did get on, you know, some of that Lego Marvel. I was rocking that for a while. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, dude, that's it. You know, I, and Neverwinter. I actually got to say, you know, Neverwinter is is pretty good. And you know, mm-hmm. I got a couple guys that I do quests with, and you know, mm-hmm. yeah, so, I was I was yeah. surprised. You know, free to play, which yeah, is turning out to be good. the the end thing for consoles nowadays it's it's starting to get to the point where there's actually some decent ones to play on both consoles which is cool right. um i again i wish i had um and on on that same note they just released um another big one that i know is big in russia and in europe world of tanks which is a really big competitive free to play game um, you know, it I just tried dropped that. on the Xbox I, One. Yeah, it just came out on that too. I couldn't really get into that. Um, yeah, I I'm not big on on uh, World of Tanks either. I kind of wanted to play their other one though. Um, they've got another one that I think is it hasn't even really released officially yet. I think it's still early access or something. Um, World of Warships, uh, which looked pretty good. I wanted to try that one. Um, a part of me, and and honestly, for a lot of the games that are that are like free to play, I really, 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 really wanted. I've really been focusing a little bit more so on trying out and playing uh, MMOs this year, more so than a lot of the console games. Because like Batman: Arkham Knight, I know it's going to be good, um, but I wasn't really pressed to get it when it first came out. Yeah, I'm waiting um, on that one. I think I'm gonna wait for a price drop on that. I yeah, mean, it I mean, looks I heard good. it's great though. I heard a lot of people no, I heard say it's good, that. but you know, you, you, I guess I, I'm not in the mood because you know what? I'll kill that game <laughs> right, in about 15 in hours. <laughs> It'd be done. That game's right. gonna be done in a weekend. I'm gonna kill that. You know, mm-hmm. if I get bored, and me, I you know, I'll start playing at 10 and be off at like three. Do that a couple nights in a row. I'm finished. And you know, I don't feel like spending 60 bucks right now for that so i'll wait till drop a little bit then i'm gonna hit that up it's gonna be a good game i know it is the other ones i enjoy too so yep 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 um but yeah there's i know there was um one of the things that got me though they bugging out in the chat room you you guys are bugging out you know um but I know that uh, one of the things I really, I've been trying to do, like I said before, is hit up a lot of these MMOs. And one of the new ones that I wanted to try that a lot of people have been talking about, I think it's called Wildstar. Um, I don't and know, I, don't know. I still want to try Elder Scrolls Online, even though I'm hearing a lot of mundane talk 
about a lot of people's experience in it. You know what I mean? I've heard people it's, say, it's yeah, not, you know, it's Elder Scrolls, but they're like, it's not really much of anything that's... No, know, it's, not, it's nothing new. I mean... Mm -hmm. uh, graphic, graphics are like <laughs> a little, you know... Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Hello Kitty Online. I mean, it's, it's slightly, <laughs> it's slightly, it's slightly better graphics. I mean, dude, Skyrim is better than that. Mm -hmm. And half the time you get lost running around trying to figure out stuff. Then you get some wacky people ask you to go on quests. So, you know, right? It, it's just, it, I, I I probably put in about a good solid five hours and I was bored. And I really yeah. tried to like it, so. And it's still, it, it, and I mean, they did at least get rid of the subscription, but I did see that they have like a tier where if you do purchase a subscription for it per month, that you get like ultra experience every time you quest and all this other kind of stuff. And Mavern, actually, I have um, tried Marvel Heroes, um, uh, which is kind of like Diablo, and it's okay. Um, but I think the issue I kind of had with uh, Marvel Heroes was that when you're playing that game, and I mean, I know this is the concept with every MMO, you want to play with a group of other heroes. Because in my eyes, I don't want to run around as, you know, Iron Man by myself and see a whole bunch of other superheroes running around doing their stuff by themselves. When you you know when you play, I kind of want to play. You remember that other game um, back in like the original Xbox days? Uh, what was it called? X Men Legends and Marvel Alliance. Yeah, you remember those games? It was like yeah. when you played those games, even though you were playing, you know, you could play it single player. You played as like a team of like three or four heroes or whatever at a time. You could do like you know, you could get like team up actions and other kinds of stuff like that. And that's kind of what I wish Marvel Heroes was more like. And I know they have, like, you have your little minion or your little team-up character that can team up with you. But, you know, it's it still makes you feel like you want more than just one or two, you know. It, it, I don't know. It just didn't, it didn't pull me in when I was playing Marvel Heroes. And that might just be because I haven't really gone and tried to get in a clan or get in, like, a larger group. Yeah, I, I felt the same probably way. the same. I, I, I have it. It, I uninstalled it. Probably one of the biggest things that pissed me off about those games is you get to a certain points and you get whack up for all these coins when you want to try to buy stuff. And then, you know, every time you get on, it's like a freaking update. Every And it's not like a small update. It's like a two, three gig update. You're like, damn. Mm -hmm. So I just yank them out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. And I feel like when you get to a certain point, like, uh, you know, uh, Elder Scrolls is doing the same thing. Like every time I log in, they're like, "Hey, go to such and such to to buy for nineteen ninety nine. You can get, you know, five thousand credits or coins or whatever the hell they call it in there." Mm -hmm. Right? I'm like, really, bro? I just I just paid forty bucks for this thing. I don't want to go get you know stuff. So uh, yeah. I'm 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 gonna lay off of that for a little bit when I get bored through that little period when it starts getting cold. I think I might jump on and play that, but. Mm. Right. So, uh, Killer T ninety nine keeps asking us about flight simulators, dude. I don't know about any flight simulators that's been out there. Like, recently. flight sims are <laughs> flight sims at this point are almost a dead genre. But right. what I will say is this: um, Elite Dangerous is a space combat flight sim. That's I think. They just released an early access version of it on the Xbox One. Um, it's been out for a while on PC. And I've heard mixed reviews about it. But, you know, it, it's still a flight sim or space simulation game um, that a decent number of people are into. Um, that other game we were talking about before with the huge... Oh, gosh. By the guy that made Wing Commander. What in the world is that game called? With all the crazy... With all the crazy um, high-priced uh, spaceships that we were talking about a while back. Oh, the one you were talking about, like fifteen hundred bucks for a spaceship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People were yeah, paying I remember, for it. yeah, I forgot the game. It hasn't. Yeah, even when been I hear that, I'm like, yeah, yeah. But it's still in beta, I think, right? 
Yeah, I mean, they're still he's still creating the game and everything, and he's got a big team and everything. And I don't, I don't remember um, what the name. Oh gosh, what was the name of that game? I can't remember, dude. But um, there's a few others though. I know there's one game that was an indie game called Vector Thrust um, that recently came out, and. Um, for just for PC, that's pretty good. It's got like cell shading, but it's got uh, realistic uh, jet fighters in it. So if you're one of those people that loves a more realistic kind of uh, flight sim, then Vector, I think it's called Vector Thrust or something like that. Check that one out. Um, yes, Microcline. That's the that's the name of the game. Star Citizen. That's the one I was trying to. That's what I was trying to spit out. That game. Yes. Uh, that's another flight sim, space flight sim. Um, I know a decent number of people have also been playing um, World of Warplanes, but I don't think that's as much of a flight yeah, sim as yeah. it is yeah, as like an arcadey yeah, kind of yeah. fight, yeah, you know, flight game or whatever. So I actually used to like like those flight simulators game back in the day. I mean, I had a big uh, joystick and everything, and mm -hmm. you know, trying to land them and. And run your run your little pilot route. Those were pretty cool, but I, think I haven't Microsoft seen Microsoft released a new one recently, didn't they? They had one. They were running for a while. I don't. Well, think I think they just released another one though. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't remember seeing anything from them, but because I think it's called Flight. Yeah, it's called Flight Microsoft Flight Simulator X. Yeah, they've had that out for released. a while. Really? Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's a new version, but I know they've been. There's a Microsoft Flight Simulator that they've had for a while. I used oh, to play yeah, yeah. It just came out in December. This past this. Oh, no, 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 no. It, it did come out a while back. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't know if they had anything new, but I know there were older ones that I used to play. And yeah. They, they, you know, they were, they were decent. Yeah. But, yeah, just like, uh, just like Killer T99 said, Star Citizen isn't even complete yet. Right now, I mean, the way they're developing it, it is kind of weird. They're making modules, so they're making like one that's like the space, that that's like a a racing mode. Another one that's like a I think they consider it an exploration mode. I don't know, but you know they're they're for some reason they're making all these different modes or whatever, and they're just I guess fleshing out the universe that they're gonna put everything in, and it hasn't even been fully released yet, which is interesting. Uh, you know, which continues to be interesting because of the millions amount of millions and millions of dollars that they've made to develop this game, and they have yet to put out anything that says, okay, this is when the release date is gonna be. Um, you know, they just keep releasing. Hey, we've got this new starship that you guys can test out and play for a while. Um, you can pay $125 for it. And I'm like, uh, okay, is that for the game? Or is that just for the ship? Or what the hell are we paying for here? You know what I mean? It's, it's kind of weird what people are paying for now, and the game isn't even out yet. So, but Killer Three, Killer Killer T ninety nine is saying he's got three thousand hours in it. Oh, so it's the Sims, wow, bro. Dude. Yo, that that's, Oh no, that's, that's in Sim Three. I'm sorry. Yeah, Sim Three. <laughs> yo, you reckon some serious time there, man? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, there's a lot of people that love Sims. Those Sim games. Those are, you know, I mean, they've made so many expansions, and you can do so much with it now. Um, I actually had a coworker said that one of his kids, they had, um, they started playing Sim. Uh, one of the sim games and they played it until they like killed one of their sims and then they stopped playing it because they were like oh i didn't want to you know i didn't want to uh play it anymore because my sim died and they didn't want to create another one so but yeah the, those sim games i mean hey it, it, some people like them some people like it them but um oh let me stick this i'm gonna stick this up here real quick. oh no we don't need that right now I'll put that up there for next for next week, but um, we are almost out of time. Um, I was really hoping I could get to a little bit more of you know some of the games that have come out this you know that have come out earlier this year. 
Um, it's, I noticed that some of you guys had even had some questions about some of the new ones that are coming, some of the new expansions and stuff. I'll put that on Dirty Hell Motto to try to get into next week. Because <laughs> unfortunately, I'm not going to be available. I'm going to be running around on vacation. But Dirty Hell Motto is going to hold it down. Um, we'll see what he comes up with. I think I got a pretty interesting lineup. But with all these interesting questions, you come back next week. I will answer them all. I'm sorry your wife left you, homie. <laughs> oh, no, uh, no. Let's uh, not bring it down. Uh, uh, stay happy, yeah. dude. Stay happy. That's what we're doing. We got games and stuff. Just lose yourself in games. <laughs> I know. I know. Say word, uh, Beef Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> beef Patrol. <laughs> Do it, Beefy. That's right. Do your Diddy Kong, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you love that Diddy Kong. Don't you? But uh, for real, ladies and gentlemen, we, you know we're we're trying to do some things here. We're trying to really get into uh, getting some more guests. If you missed the show last week, we had a great guest from TechWeLike um, dot com and Angelina Montanez. She, you know, gave us the what's what in uh, esports and um, a lot of things she's doing on that website. We hope we can get her back soon. Um, we got to get Chris Willits from the designnews.com back in. He's got some great comic book uh, um, knowledge. It was It's always a good discussion with him as well. Um, and actually, I'm kind of working on another another person that might be coming in also that, that's a comic book expert that I'm hoping I can get in on the show. Um, I'm hoping in another month or so, so we'll get some more comic book talk on the show as well. Um, for now, we're going to continue to be here on Ladies of the Round Table at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, Makita, our other co-host who's usually on the show, um, she's got a scheduling conflict, so we might have to change around the schedule a little bit. Um, but I'll definitely let you guys know soon whenever that'll be. I'm thinking maybe Wednesdays at the same time or maybe Thursdays, one or the other. We'll see. have to see how it goes. But um, I am going to the Poconos for vacation, actually, uh, next week. Not this think, weekend, I, but the weekend. I after. think uh, Big Beef wants to go with you because he's a wall. <laughs> oh, oh, don't, oh, I'm sorry, dude. Uh, I'm sorry, Beefy. Sorry, Beefy. It's just me and the little lady. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you know, Beef, if you're alone, your name speaks for itself. So I think you should be able to work something out. Ew! Oh, no! Oh, ew. Yeah, ew. Let's let's try to keep professional here, thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just trying, just trying to have a little fun with it, man. Yeah. Hey, keeping it real, right? Keeping it real. Yeah. Have you guys ever played with felt? Hell, no, we haven't. <laughs> 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 but ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> y'all have been a blast. Um, I appreciate it. Definitely come back. Uh, stay with us. Tuesdays, 9 p.m. Um, stick with us, Beefy. We will we will keep you uh, entertained. If you guys uh, want some other good shows, we, there's some other good gaming talk shows here also on Ladies of the Roundtable. Check them out. L-O-R-T live on Fridays at 930 um, they also do giveaways there as well. And if you guys continue to bring more people and follow us, we will also be able to bring bring you guys some giveaways and some other things like that. So that's right. We get you free follow us. Kung Fu karate flicks, yo. Oh, he's right. stupid. No, we don't get no karate baby. flicks. He's lying. He is lying. So yes, make sure you follow us on Twitch. Follow us on on Twitter. Follow us on uh, Facebook. Follow, follow, follow to other people to follow. Yes, hang in there, beefy. Um, It'll be okay, dude. It'll be okay. We here for you, and we will always be here for you on Tuesdays. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are out. This is the Geek Swag Podcast. We love you guys. We are O U T. Mm-hmm.